Hello everyone. We'll be continuing with the chapter gaseous state and thermodynamics. And as we have discussed in the previous lecture, the kinetic theory of gases. We have learned what is basically ideal gases and some examples in support of the molecular motion of the particles or the, uh, the kinetic model of kinetic theory of gases. We learned some uh, proofs in favor of it, and we learned what is the ideal gas equation that governs the basically the motion of the particles or the state of the gases you know which are ideal in nature okay so in this lecture basically we will learn what is a pressure exerted by a gas and the different type of velocities of the molecules or the gas that are present and we will learn what is basically known as the uh, degrees of freedom etc so we'll begin with the first topic that is pressure exerted by a gas Okay, so <clears throat> let M be the mass of the gas in a container. Okay, N be the number of molecules present in the container one thing is for sure that we can have a relation m equals m not into n where m not is basically the mass of one molecule because the total mass of the gas would be basically mass of one molecule into the total number of molecules that would give us the total mass of the gas that's quite straightforward okay and similarly we can have capital m as m not into n not where n not is the avogadro's number Okay, which is basically six point zero two three into ten raised to power twenty three, which is ideally the number of molecules in a one mole of gas. That is basically number of gas molecules in one mole of gas. Correct. m is therefore the molar mass of the gas okay or we can say molar weight of the gas that's means the same we are loosely using mass and the weight as the same terms only okay now basically we can say there is a assumption let us suppose if the molecules are moving with the velocities with speeds c1 c2 c3 this continued to c because there are n number of particles so we are assuming that there are n such different speeds then there is a velocity then there is a speed defined for the gas for the whole of gas which is known as then the root mean square speed is defined as it is written as rms r m s first letter of all the three terms root mean square so we refer it as c r m s equals it is calculated in the reverse order that is you square first then you take the mean and then you take the root okay so if you apply this first you square that is you square all the velocities c square c2 square c1 
square. This continued till cn square. Then you take the mean. That is you add all of them. And divided by n. Then you take the root. You take the whole root of it. So this is basically the definition for root mean square speed of the gas. That is square all the velocity all the speeds of each and every part molecule then take the mean of it and then take the square root of it that is defined as the root mean square velocity or speed of the gas it is defined for the whole of gas defined for whole of gas okay so basically the pressure exerted by the gas can be defined in terms of this root mean square velocity. Okay. The pressure exerted by a gas is directly proportional to the root mean square velocity whole square. So it is given with the formula pressure equals 1 by 3 m0 into n upon v into c square rms so this is the important formula for calculating the pressure exerted by a gas having n number of molecules in a given volume v okay now you know that as you just use the formula m0 into n is basically the total mass okay so we can replace this m0 n by m over here So this can be basically replaced over here by m. So what we get is p is equal to 1 by 3 into m upon v into c square rms. Correct? Where m is mass of the gas. And v is the volume occupied by the gas. And as we know that density or rho is basically mass upon volume. So basically we can replace this m by v by rho and we get a simple formula for pressure that is 1 by 3 into rho into c square rms where rho is m by v or you can say m0 that is mass of a molecule into the total number of molecules upon total volume occupied by the gas ok now if you just have <coughs> if you manipulate this formula a bit what you will get is c square rms is equal to 3 into pressure upon rho correct now C RMS could be said as 3P upon rho square root. This is basically an alternate definition as compared to the given by this. This was a general notation. What does this root mean square basically means? But as you know that this cannot be calculated. Because you can't measure each and every particle's velocity or speed and you can't square it and take the mean of it. Actually, you can't even measure the exact number of molecules. You can just manipulate by, con by its molecular weight. You can estimate by finding the number of moles present and then multiplying it with the Avogadro's number to find the number of molecules. But you can't measure each and every particle's exact velocity or speed. So, this is basically a measure of to finding the CRMS velocity of it because you can measure the mass of the gas you can know the volume occupied by the gas so you can find the rho and similarly you can find the pressure by some various instruments the pressure exerted by the gas okay now if you manipulate it a bit more crms is nothing but 3p rho can be written as mass upon volume so the upper term becomes p into v and as we know that we are calculating for our ideal gas pv is equal to rt where n equals to 1 we are dealing with 1 mole of a gas so we can say that 
आर एम एस पी वी कैन बी रिप्लेस बाय थ्री इंटू आर इंटू पी अपॉन एम करेक्ट सो आई वुड लाइक सो बाय दिस थिंग यू आर क्वाइट मच रिलेटेड दैट आर इज अ कॉन्स्टेंट मास ऑक्यूपाइड इज समथिंग समथिंग ऑक्यूपाइड बाय वन मोल ऑफ अ गैस सो मास इज ऑल्सो अ कॉन्स्टेंट फॉर अ गिवन गैस आर इज कॉन्स्टेंट एम इज कॉन्स्टेंट सो बेसिकली इट इज डिपेंडिंग ऑन टेम्परेचर ओनली सो इफ आई आस्क यू सो बेसिकली फॉर अ गिवन गैस the crms velocity velocity depends only on temperature okay what do i mean to say is for in this for a given gas that is same gas is taken at two different temperatures that is t1 and t2 let us suppose we are taking it at two different temperatures t1 and t2 crms will be different and you can obviously relate them because crms if i call it 1 would be 3 r t1 upon m and crms 2 would be 3 r t2 upon m so we can relate them as crms 1 upon crms 2 is equal to 3 r t1 upon m into 3 r t2 into m m and m are cancelled 3 3 cancelled r r cancelled and it gives us t1 upon t2 so basically crms is proportional to root of t but when there are different gases when we are dealing with two different gases we can say that in two different gases at t1 and t2 for the first gas you can say that crms1 is nothing but root 3 r t1 upon m1 because there would be some different mass for the other gas second gas you can say that crms2 equals root of 3 r t2 upon m2 so crms1 upon crms2 equals root of 3 r t1 upon m1 into 3 r t2 into m2 3 r and 3 r cancels out so it is root of t1 m2 upon t2 m1 okay and if we so basically till now what we have learned is nothing but first of all we defined what is the crms velocity it is defined in terms of a pressure uh, it is basically the <coughs> square of all the individual particle or molecules velocity being squared up and then we take the mean and then take the square root the pressure exerted by the gas can be represented in terms of the root mean square velocity pressure is equal to 1 by 3 into rho into c rms square okay so we can represent crm square in terms of pressure and rho this is important because we cannot find the individual velocities of each and every molecule so we have to represent crm as in terms of a 
quantities which can be measured from outside that are pressure and uh, rho so we can reconvert it into terms of rt and m and r is a constant m is a constant for a given gas so it is dependent on temperature only but when we are comparing basically two different gases we have m as also a variant so crms1 upon crms2 is t1 m2 upon t2 m1 now i would like to introduce to you is one more velocity of a gas that is average velocity or average speed this is basically written as c average c average is nothing but take the individual molecular speeds and take the average of it so we are considering n molecules so we take n molecular velocities or speeds and take the mean of it okay but <coughs> as c rms was 3rt by m not similarly when we calculate c average it comes out to be 8rt upon pi m root now obviously you can see that the different is only in terms of constant it is 8 by pi and the other is 3 pi is nothing but 3.14 so you can see obviously 8 by pi is less than 3 so you can say that c rms is always greater than c average so you can keep this in mind note that c rms is always greater than c average now the basically as the <coughs> kinetic theory of gases says that except during collision all the energy that the gas has is basically kinetic so we are seeing that how the kinetic energy is stored as in what are the various forms of energy what is the composition of that kinetic energy so now we would consider basically kinetic energy of molecules okay so if you take a single molecule of a gas how is the kinetic energy in it present okay so first of all i would like to define one thing that is basically known as degree of freedom this is a terminology that is required in order to understand the kinetic energy of molecules so the degree of freedom is basically uh i would like to say that it is total number of it is the total number of independent quantities quantities required in order to required in order to describe the motion of a particle basically describe the position or motion of the system completely okay so that is basically the degree of freedom how many different or independent quantities that you required in order to completely define the motion of the system so if we are dealing with basically monoatomic gases which have only one atom in it then there would be some different number of degree of freedom and when you are dealing with diatomic or polyatomic then you would require different number of independent quantities in order to define the motion of the particles okay so the monoatomic <coughs> gases are basically example of them are helium argon neon which have just one molecule in them okay so 
they have only one atom in one molecule okay so basically if you think of just one ball okay its molecule is basically just one atom one atoms as we assume that are in spherical shape so if i ask you what are the various motions it can have it can either translate in independent motions basically so if i ask you this question you say that it has basically three motions it can either go in x axis it can translate along x axis y axis or it can translate along the z axis okay so basically <coughs> a single atom molecule it is capable of it is basically capable of only translatory motion so there are basically 3 degrees of freedom that is one in x direction one is y direction and one is z direction okay similarly if you consider the diatomic molecule diatomic gas molecule but you must be knowing that the examples for the diatomic gas molecule are of hydrogen gas chlorine gas oxygen gas nitrogen gas etc which have two element two atoms basically h2 molecule is nothing but h molecule another h sorry h atom another h atom they are linked by a bond so this is basically what is a h2 molecule okay so basically if you try to represent this in terms of the 3d configuration if we call this axis as x x dash axis this as y y dash axis and this as z z dash axis we have the say h2 molecule aligned like this along the x x dash axis let us suppose these are the two atoms a a dash or a a let's call okay so basically <coughs> a2 is capable of this a2 is capable of we are generally referring to the diatomic gas molecule as a2 it is capable of translatory motion so so besides this it is capable of rotation as well it can rotate about this y y dash axis it can rotate along this axis or it can rotate along z z dash axis so it is along with the so basically it cannot rotate along the molecular axis the molecular axis is x x dash apart from this it can rotate about all the two other perpendicular axis okay so it is capable of translatory motion and the second motion possible is basically rotational motion other is rotatory motion so the translatory motion gives us a gives it a 3 degree of freedom because it can translate in x direction along the x axis y axis or z axis the rotatory motion gives us 2 degree of freedom because it can rotate about y y dash axis or z z dash axis so therefore diatomic gas molecule basically has 5 degree of freedom okay so when we are dealing with triatomic basically molecules i would not like to basically represent it how does it look like because it can have various type of configuration but the important thing is that in the triatomic molecules such as 
सीओ टू एच टू ओ एसओ टू एटसेट्रा द मेन थिंग इज दैट इट हैज सिक्स डिग्रीज ऑफ फ्रीडम इट इज केपेबल ऑफ ट्रांसलेटर मोशन थ्री फ्रॉम ट्रांसलेटरी मोशन एंड थ्री फ्रॉम रोटेटरी मोशन it is capable of both so that's why 6 degrees of freedom for a triatomic gas molecule now <clears throat> if we try to derive some results from the kinetic energy of the translation per molecule so let's try to find out what is the kinetic mean kinetic energy stored okay so we are trying to find the एवरेज कानेटिक एनर्जी पर मॉलिक्यूल ड्यू टू ट्रांसलेटरी मोशन ओके वी आर इंटरेस्टेड इन दिस सो दिस इज नथिंग बट टेकिंग द एवरेज ऑफ द कानेटिक एनर्जी ऑफ ईच एंड एवरी मॉलिक्यूल सो दिस वुड बी kinetic energy mean would be nothing but finding the kinetic energy of due to translation of each and every molecule and taking the mean of it that would be half into m not mass of the molecule into c1 square plus half into m not into c2 square this continued for all the n elements that is half into m not into cn square add all them up and take the mean that is divided by n so it would give us basically we can take half m not common what will be remaining with is c1 square plus c2 square plus cn square by n and as we are familiar this is nothing but crms square so this would give us half into m not into crms square is equal to kinetic energy is mean so this gives us a very effective formula and as we know that crms is nothing but root of 3rt by m correct so <coughs> if we represent crms square from here this would be 3rt upon m and m can be written basically equals to m not into n where is it is the molecular weight of one molecule into the avogadro's number that would give us the molecule the molar weight of the gas now this could be similarly written as 3 into r by n into t by m not this is a new constant known as k which is a boltzmann constant because as you can see r is a constant that is the ideal gas constant and n is the avogadro's number which is also a constant so this whole quantity is a constant which is k known as the boltzmann constant which has a value k equals 1.38 into 10 raised to power minus 23 okay so basically <coughs> we derive from here that this could be written as kinetic energy mean equals 3 by 2 into pv upon n which is basically nothing but 3 by 2 into kt so in short we basically proved that kinetic energy is directly proportional to just the temperature of the gas it has nothing to do with any other thing it is just directly related to kinetic energy of the gas so kinetic energy per mole we are dealing with per mole would be basically this was for one molecule so 3 by 2 into k into n 
एवोगेड्रोस नंबर एन नॉट इंटू टी एंड के इंटू एन नॉट एज यू जस्ट डिस्कवर्ड इट वॉज आर सो इट वुड बी थ्री बाय टू आर टी करेक्ट सो पर मोल द कानेटिक एनर्जी इन अ गैस इज थ्री बाय टू आर टी दैट इज ड्यू टू ट्रांसलेशन ओके सो दिस इज वॉट वी डिराइव सो इन दिस लेक्चर वी लर्न बेसिकली वॉट इज सी आर एम एस वेलॉसिटी वी लर्न हाउ इट इज रिप्रेजेंटेड इन टर्म्स ऑफ प्रेशर एंड डेंसिटी देन वी डिस्कवर्ड दैट इट इज प्रोपोर्शनल टू द रूट ऑफ टेम्परेचर एंड अपॉन द रूट ऑफ मास मॉलिकुलर मास ऑफ द गैस and then we learned what is the average speed of gas and we compared the rms and the c average then we learned what are the kinetic energy of a molecule how the kinetic energy is stored in the molecule and what is basically known as the degree of freedom that is the number of independent quantities that we required in order to completely describe the motion of the system then we learned how a monoatomic gas molecule has its kinetic energy what are the various attributes in it similarly for the diatomic molecules and the triatomic molecules then we discovered what is the kinetic energy per molecular per molecule stored in a gas due to just the translation motion that is directly proportional to the temperature of the gas and then we learned that for a whole mole of a gas per mole of a gas 3 by 2 rt is the kinetic energy due to translation so in the next lectures we will learn about equipartition of energy and we will solve some questions based on the concepts we have learned till now uh, so that's all for today thank you